Myasthenia gravis is a chronic autoimmune condition affecting neuromuscular signaling, leading to muscle weakness in skeletal muscle. The name itself means severe muscle weakness. The neuromuscular junction is the interface where signals travelling along nerves are transmitted to muscle fibres causing contractions. It is a form of chemical synapse when the signals reach the end of the nerve, the presynaptic membrane. This leads to neurotransmitters, particularly acetylcholine, being released into the synapse and binding to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, leading to a cascade resulting in muscle contraction. In myasthenia gravis, there are autoantibodies that target elements of this pathway and impair signal transmission to the muscle fiber. In 80 to 90% of cases, these are antibodies targeting nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. Overall, this leads to reduced binding sites for acetylcholine and so inconsistent action potentials being generated in the muscle fiber and so muscle weakness. Other potential targets include muscle-specific tyrosine kinase, low-density lipoprotein receptor related protein 4, agrin, collagen Q and cortactin. The primary manifestation is weakness and fatigability of skeletal muscles, often with characteristic distribution including ocular, which mostly presents with diplopia, meaning double vision, and ptosis, meaning grouping of the eyelid. There can be an oropharyngeal distribution, which features symptoms such as dysarthria, meaning speech disturbance, often manifesting as slow or slurred speech, or dysphagia meaning difficulty swallowing, and facial paresis is also possible. Third, we have generalized, which can include ocular and oropharyngeal manifestations, as well as elements like shortness of breath due to involvement of respiratory muscles and limb weakness that tends to be proximal. The fourth type is limb girdle, which is rarer and only features limb involvement. Around 50% of those with the ocular form will progress to generalized within two years, and the symptoms generally worsen with activity and improve with rest. They commonly display a pattern of being better in the morning and worse later on in the day. We mentioned shortness of breath, which can actually be an indicator of myasthenic crisis, which is defined as an exacerbation of myasthenia gravis requiring ventilation. This is thought to happen in around 1 in 5 patients. Triggers include trauma, including surgery, infections and medication, such as antibiotics like telethromycin, fluoroquine loans and macrolides. Other examples include botulin toxin, as well as quinine, D-penicillamine and corticosteroids, even though corticosteroids are sometimes used in the treatment, as we'll see shortly. Other complications include a risk of aspiration and as a result pneumonia, and there is also an associated risk of myocarditis and thyroiditis. The reason why the autoantibodies form is not completely understood. There is a link to the human leukocyte antigens, or HLA types, and also to the thymus, a primary lymphoid organ that sits behind the sternum. In 70% of cases, there is follicular hyperplasia, and in 10% there is a thymoma. Presence of other autoimmune conditions in the patient or family is a risk factor, and it is most common in females under 40 or in males over 60, although it can happen at any age. For a diagnosis, the history and physical are supported by serological and electrophysiological investigations. The physical exam can involve asking the patient to look up or hold their arms out to the sides. In myasthenia gravis, ptosis should develop when looking up or they will not be able to keep their arms abducted, with the general time frame being used is less than 3 minutes. Generally, there is intact sensation, reflexes and there is typically no atrophy. However, facial and tongue atrophy can be seen in muscle-specific kinase positive cases. Myasthenia gravis has no autonomic dysfunction, 
and if this is present, a differential to keep in mind is lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, which can also feature proximal limb weakness, but this tends to improve with repeated movement. Coming back to myasthenia gravis, acetylcholine receptor antibodies, as we said, are present in 80-90%, to 90%, with muscle-specific tyrosine kinase antibodies in 70% of those who are seronegative for acetylcholine receptor antibodies. Electrophysiological testing is done mostly when serological testing is negative. This includes repetitive nerve stimulation where electric shocks are delivered to the nerve and action potentials are recorded from the muscle. If this is not conclusive, single fibre electromyography is undertaken where a needle with an electrode is inserted and captures action potentials from one or two muscle fibres. In those with dyspnea or suspected crisis, serial pulmonary function tests are undertaken, and a CT of the thorax is indicated to evaluate for thymoma. Treatment largely depends on the severity, with some mild cases, or those with only occasional symptoms, do not require regular treatment. The mainstay of treatment, especially in those with ocular or generalized myasthenia gravis, is the cholinesterase inhibitor pyridostigmine, though this tends to be less effective in those with muscle-specific tyrosine kinase antibodies. This inhibits the breakdown of acetylcholine and increases the amount available to bind. Low-dose corticosteroids can be added, gradually increasing the dose as high doses can precipitate a crisis. In cases where steroids are not tolerated or effective, immunosuppressants can be used, essentially as steroid sparing agents, including azathioprine, methotrexate, and cyclosporin. The monoclonal antibody to CD20 cells, rituximab, has been shown to be effective in those with muscle-specific tyrosine kinase antibodies, and intravenous immunoglobulins or plasma exchange are other options typically when the other options fail or can be used during myasthenic crisis as well. A thymectomy can be beneficial in some patients, particularly those with generalized myasthenia gravis not responding to cholinesterase inhibitors.